How many times has an employee signed a settlement agreement and didn't read the fine print? Or the employee signed the settlement agreement but did not follow through to the end. We're going to talk about the settlement agreement and how the employer can breach it and the employees right. To help us illustrate this video, we're going to look at EEOC cases and EEOC findings. And we're going to look at three instances in which the settlement agreement can be breached. The first one, meeting of the minds. In this case, EEOC found that the settlement agreement was void and that there was no meeting of the minds between the agency and the complainant. As part of the settlement agreement, the agency would research the overtime schedule to determine whether the complainant was passed over for those overtime hours. And if the agency found that the complainant had been passed over, she could make up those hours. The complainant alleged two things. One, that the agency breached the agreement that it failed to provide her an opportunity to make up those overtime hours. And two, that the overtime hours that she was offered to make up was actually days that she normally worked overtime and on days when all employees were required to work. The commission found that there was no contemporaneous meeting of the minds between the parties concerning the makeup overtime and the settlement agreement was void. The second instance is bad faith. In this case, EEOC found there was a breach of the settlement and that the agency acted in bad faith. The complainant and the agency entered into a settlement agreement, which provided in part that the agency would place the complainant into a specific building management custodian position and pay her back pay. The complainant asserted that the agency knew that the building where the position was located would be closing, but failed to disclose the information to her before she signed the agreement. The commission found that the agency acted in bad faith when despite having knowledge of the pending closure of the building where the position specified in the agreement was located, the agency failed to disclose the information to the complainant or her representative. Remember this, fraud. Fraud occurs where a settlement offer was the result of fraud or bad faith and in that case, a plaintiff or complainant may be able to reopen the claim if fraud is later discovered. The next instance is waivers and releases. In this case, EEOC found a breach of settlement, again, because there was no waiver and release. The parties entered into a settlement agreement that provided in part that the agency would issue a neutral reference letter and restrict the information that is supplied to the third party to that which was specified in the agreement. The agreement clearly set forth the party's understanding that complainant was releasing her claims based on the promise that the agency would not release any negative information and would only release the information expressly specified in the agreement. The agency 
released additional negative information via personal forms. The commission found that the complainant did not waive and release the agency from claims for future damages that were incurred after the execution of the agreement and any waivers complainant made were on the agency's compliance with the terms of the agreement. So what is the takeaway here? Understand what you are signing pro se. Read the settlement agreement with the fine tooth comb. Understand what the employer's obligations are, what your obligations are. See the settlement agreement through to the end. Make sure that the employer follows every detail in the agreement. Follow up.